Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and welcome to part 8. I need to create part 8 folder. Just so that we can save everything in here. Part 8. Save as blender file, and then open that blender file. Sorry about this, I should have already done this. Okay. Um, okay, so in this part we're going to be doing the compositing. So there's not much you have to do in order to sort of prepare for the compositing. We just have to render it. Now because this is uh, in cycles, it's going to take ages to render if we uh, render it properly. So let's set the sampling to 50 so that we just get an idea of what it's going to look like and begin to render it. So I'm going to pause and render. Okay, so 39 seconds later, you've rendered 50 samples. Um, just realised there's a few things in the materials that I might need to change, but we can do that later. So let's get straight into the compositing. So jump across to the compositor by pressing Control Left Arrow, tick Use Nodes and Backdrop, and just space these out and add in a viewer. And there we go. So, okay. Um, first of all, I want to do a bit of color correction, make this look a bit more warm and nice. So, we're going to add in some RGB curves like this. Just dark, uh, just uh, add in a point and just bring that down, and then make another one, bring that up, just to get some more contrasting colors. I don't want it too contrasting like that. So, just, you know, don't. So something like that looks bad, but something that's very smooth, like a subtle bend in this curve, uh, that looks good. So something like that. Okay, uh, now if we change to the R thing here, so where it says red, just increase that slightly, and we should be able to get some warmer colours. And if you really want to, you can even decrease the blue amount, but sometimes that looks a bit weird. But this seems to make it look nice. Okay, uh, so with that done, we can now move into the next bit, which, um, well, uh, I think we may as well get into the volumetric lighting. So we're going to go into input image, and then open up the, um, on the projects, where did I save it? That would be, uh, tutorial apartment images, volumetric light factor. Okay, um, now if we take a look at what this looks like, uh, you can see it's just this stuff coming in and um, you know lighting up the scene a bit. If we t uh, were to just go to mix and then set this to screen, um, where is it? Screen. Okay, and then we can put this into the top and this into the bottom and then put that in there. You can see it affects it a bit too much, and uh, does it work the other way around? I don't think it would. No, oh, it does. But you know, uh, you can put it in the bottom and everything, and decrease the factor to make it a bit less colourful. But a quicker way, or an easier way, should I say, to do this is to put this into the factor of a mix node, and then put in these RGB curves into the top, and then now, uh, if you were to change this to like a this orangey yellow colour here, uh, like that, that looks nice, we might even change it to screen. And now, when we make this colour darker, it will decrease the opacity of it. So let's keep it around about there, and that way it's just a bit of subtle volumetric lighting coming in from the outside. Okay, so um, we're nearly done, uh, we may as well add in a vignette while we're here, so let's just move this over here. Okay. Now a vignette is uh, it, it just makes the corners sort of uh, black out a bit. It just you know frames it nicely. So um, yeah, let's uh, get into that. So the way we do this is we go into um, converter and set this to math uh, like this, and then change this to greater than, which is always at the end of the menu. And then if we put this into the top and then set the value down to zero. Uh, then now when we uh, look into this through the viewer you just get complete whiteness and um, oh by the way uh, if 
you sometimes see little bits of black in the scene you can just set this to minus one and it works exactly the same way um, so now we're gonna go to uh, distort and add in a lens distortion node and then uh, set the distort all the way up to one now um, if we were to go to color mix set this to multiply and put this into the bottom and our image into the top and take a look at this you will see now that uh, we've got these black things in the corners but it's looking kind of nasty uh, very rarely does this effect actually look good like that uh, so we need to feather out these edges quite a bit so the way we do this is simply by adding in a blur node setting it to fast Gaussian uh, clicking relative and then setting this to about 35 by 35 and maybe ticking uh, I think ticking X works better in this case and now if we lower this factor amount you can see we're just uh, lowering the influence it has over the image so there we go that's our vignette and I think that we can actually call that the end of the compositing although I think I did a lot more in my previous thing but this is looking fine how it is um, I think actually we can add in a color balance as well uh, so maybe it's best to uh, just take away these RGB curves in fact no, uh, keep them we're just going to add in a color balance at the end just for a little bit of extra editing and sometimes these aren't really necessary but I'm just going to change the mid-tones here to a sort of orangey color and the darker areas can become uh, Oh, uh, I don't know. Actually, let's keep the... Whoa. I want to keep this at white. Like that, okay? So just uh, we're just adjusting the mid-tones just to a very slight orangey-yellow colour. And that way it, it barely affects the scene, but it just makes it just a little bit more of um, a warm scene. Okay, so now I think uh, we've uh, done that. Make sure that the colour balance goes into the composite node at the end. And uh, yeah, I'd say that we've uh, finished. Now, there was something, oh yeah, the materials. I want to just fix them up a bit. So we've got time to do this. Um, let's quickly you know, go back to the default thing here. And then come out of that. And then change this to 3D view. Okay. Um, for these, uh, the, the bricks. So over here, brick wall. Um, just want to press Alt Z to go into textured view. Just over here in the UV mapping thing, I want to scale this up so that the bricks look smaller. And then we can do the same for the fireplace, just make them look a bit smaller as well. And there we go. I think that we are ready to render this out properly now. So I'm going to pause and render this. And before I render this, I've already rendered it and I forgot to tell you some stuff. Uh, we need to set this to 100% so it renders a 1920 by 1080 if you want a, a 1080p image otherwise you do 1 to 80 by 720 um, which I might actually use just to save a bit of time um, in fact no uh, 1 to 80 there we go saves a lot of time that way okay and we're also going to need to set the render value here to uh, I'd say about because we're rendering this on my graphics card the GPU compute. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, if you don't get that option, which some people don't, or I know I didn't, just go to the user preferences uh, to system and then compute device, set this to CUDA, and then you can select your graphics card. I believe OpenCL also has that, but CUDA works better. Uh, okay, so let's just close that. And yeah, set the render to, um, I think, a thousand samples. Uh, we can actually use that okay so now I'm going to render this and I'll return when it's rendered okay so it's finally rendered but uh, some of the more uh, well equipped with eyes would be able to see that our volumetric lighting is not the right size so we could do an easy fix which is basically come out of that and then go into the compositor add in a uh, distort node, scale, set this to render size 
and then put this into the image as in the volumetric lighting image into the scale and then put that into the factor but uh, and that's working quite well but if you wanted to get it more high definition and clear then we're going to want to go to um, where is it uh, our blender internal file here and re-render it at the full dimensions M may as well do it 1920 by 1080 and then shrink it down later uh, just for uh, you know uh, oh hang on, that's it cycles render of course I messed some of this up right so go to the blender render and I'm gonna have to set up this lighting thing again but that's not too much of a problem although it is so let's change this to spot and how did we do this right um this was in the second layer um, uh, hang on. Uh, yeah okay so uh, okay this will be the scene this will be lamp and just to get things quick here uh, I'm just gonna quickly uh, add the halo in increase the steps um, turn off all this stuff um, what else did we do? Uh, fall off, no, any of this stuff. Uh, could play around with this if you want. May as well. 0 0.01, 0 0.01 there. Um, size, I think I increase that a bit and uh, let's see how that looks. And now we've got that problem again. Um, what was it? Um, the size, the samples. Uh, I think it was this was white. We want this to be black. So now when we render it, yeah, there we go. Uh, now we just want to increase the size a bit more so that it fills up the scene a bit more. Um, okay, now it's looking a bit strange. So decrease it a bit. Okay, that would do. And now we can save that as the volumetric lighting factor. Then go back to this blender file. And uh, we're going to want to just load it up again. It's the volumetric lighting factor. Okay, and there we go. Uh, that's now looking a lot better. So there we go. That's our final render. So thanks for watching this series. Um, wait, no, that's not the right one. Uh, there we go. Thanks for watching this series. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe. Uh, if you want to show me your results, you can uh, uh, post them as a video response or something. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, give this video a like, uh, subscribe, and yeah, uh, goodbye.